Section 19 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aesop for Children, Fables 73 to 76 by Aesop. The Fox and the Goat a fox fell into a well and though it was not very deep he found that he could not get out again after he had been in the well a long time a thirsty goat came by the goat thought the fox had gone down to drink and so he asked if the water was good the finest in the whole country said the crafty fox jump in and try it there is more than enough for both of us the thirsty goat immediately jumped in and began to drink the fox just as quickly jumped on the goat's back and leaped from the tip of the goat's horns out of the well the foolish goat now saw what a plight he had got into and begged the fox to help him out but the fox was already on his way to the woods if you had as much sense as you have beard old fellow he said as he ran you would have been more cautious about finding a way to get out again before you jumped in look before you leap the cat the cock and the young mouse a very young mouse who had never seen anything of the world almost came to grief the very first time he ventured out and this is the story he told his mother about his adventures i was strolling along very peaceably when just as i turned the corner into the next yard i saw two strange creatures one of them had a very kind and gracious look but the other was the most fearful monster you can imagine you should have seen him on top of his head and in front of his neck hung pieces of raw red meat he walked about restlessly tearing up the ground with his toes and beating his arms savagely against his sides the moment he caught sight of me he opened his pointed mouth as if to swallow me and then he let out a piercing roar that frightened me almost to death can you guess who it was that our young mouse was trying to describe to his mother it was nobody but the barnyard cock and the first one the little mouse had ever seen if it had not been for that terrible monster the mouse went on I should have made the acquaintance of the pretty creature who looked so good and gentle. He had thick velvety fur, a meek face, and a look that was very modest, though his eyes were bright and shining. As he looked at me, he waved his fine long tail and smiled i am sure he was just about to speak to me when the monster i have told you about let out a screaming yell and i ran for my life my son said the mother mouse that gentle creature you saw was none other than the cat under his kindly appearance he bears a grudge against every one of us the other was nothing but a bird who wouldn't harm you in the least as for the cat he eats us so be thankful my child that you escaped with your life and as long as you live never judge people by their looks do not trust alone to outward appearances 
THE WOLF AND THE SHEPHERD A wolf had been prowling around a flock of sheep for a long time, and the shepherd watched very anxiously to prevent him from carrying off a lamb. But the wolf did not try to do any harm. Instead, he seemed to be helping the shepherd take care of the sheep. At last the shepherd got so used to seeing the wolf about that he forgot how wicked he could be. One day he even went so far as to leave his flock in the wolf's care while he went on an errand. But when he came back and saw how many of the flock had been killed and carried off, he knew how foolish to trust a wolf. Once a wolf, always a wolf. The Peacock and the Crane A peacock, puffed up with vanity, met a crane one day, and to impress him spread his gorgeous tail in the sun. Look, he said, what have you to compare with this? I am dressed in all the glory of the rainbow while your feathers are gray as dust. The crane spread his broad wings and flew up toward the sun. Follow me if you can, he said. But the peacock stood where he was among the birds of the barnyard, while the crane soared in freedom far up into the blue sky. The useful is of much more importance and value than the ornamental. End of section 19. Recording by Susan Morin, Portland, Maine.